Hi guys, Keto Phoenix here and welcome to another one of my videos. Real quick, if you're new, if this is the first time clicking on my video, um, a little bit of a background. I'm This channel is basically just about my uh, weight loss and fitness journey as I try to improve my overall health and lifestyle. Um, and I mostly do that through the ketogenic diet. Um, I'm also doing a lot of running and I talk about that a lot and I have vlogs and videos about that. I have done a couch to 5k and then I did some 10k training and everything and in fact I actually have a 10k race tomorrow which I will be vlogging and you will see that on this channel. Um, and then my training is actually going to be increasing as I start working on half marathon which is crazy for those who have been with me in this journey from the beginning i just i can't believe it i remember two minutes just seemed like ages and now here i am you know heading towards half marathon and you know every time i think about how scary that sounds right like half marathon is like what like a little over 13 miles in distance so that's like two 10k races basically it, it seems kind of scary right now I'm like I don't know if I can do that but again I didn't think I was gonna be able to run a 5k in the beginning too so it does bring me comfort in, in knowing that I know that I can do it because the other things that I've accomplished have helped me now understand what I'm capable of right like I can do it I just need to stay committed and not give up right like that's that's basically what it is so Anyways, um, that's, you know, if you are new and any of this sounds remotely interesting to you, I hope that you'll stick around with us. We are small, but we are growing slowly and I appreciate all of my new subscribers. Um, you guys really made me feel special. So thank you so much. And I appreciate every single one of you guys who show up and watch my videos. So again, thank you so much. Now we're going to get into talking about today's video. This is going to be a two parter because I wanted to take time to talk about these these things and I didn't want a super long video and I didn't want to feel rushed either. And so basically I'm just gonna be talking about some myths uh, involving the ketogenic diet and today we're gonna talk about five of those, okay? Um, there's a lot of misinformation about keto out there and I have talked to so many people who had thought about doing keto and then they read some articles about these myths or you know things like that and they're just like no no you know keto's not for me and they don't they don't try it so i'm hoping by doing this video and the part two that's going to be coming out that it might help some of you out there who might not know a ton about keto like there is lots of videos out there i mean i know personally i have watched several videos where they know what they're talking about they're like phd doctors right like they're they know what they're talking about. The problem with that is a lot of them use really complicated words and terminologies that unless you've went to medical school, you're not going to understand. Like you can accept the concept that you know they know what they're talking about, right? Like they're proving that by using these words that they know what they're talking about, right? So you can you can guess that, okay, you know, keto's worth it, keto's good, just because they sound so confident and they use their words. But I also find that it helps to kind of dim that down and speak to the majority of people out there who don't know these medical terms, right? And it helps to understand, which is like, for example, you're looking at ingredients on a list, right? Now, if you are looking on the back of a bag and there is 40 billion different ingredients in the food that you're looking and eating, like you're not gonna understand what 90% of what you're eating in that food is. Like, what is this? I like, I don't even know what this word is, let alone what it does and what it's gonna do to my body, right? But when you get to a simple food, especially on the ketogenic diet, you know, you're looking for just simple foods. Two ingredients and you know exactly what they are. Right, and, and that's kind of like what I'm trying to do with this particular video today. And these are common myths too, by the way. I'm not, you know, I didn't do a bunch of research on like crazy myths, like Bigfoot keto myths, you know. These are the common ones, the ones that seem to be the most scary, um, the ones that seem to have people not doing keto, right? 
So um, I'm gonna talk about five of them today, but before we get started on that, I do want to let you guys know that I'm not a doc, I'm not a healthcare provider, I'm not a nutritionist, I don't have any studies or doctorates in anything health. Um, all of the stuff that I'm talking about is just from the personal experience that I have done in my uh, nine and a half years journey with keto. Um, these are things that I have researched now, if you're thinking about doing keto, I always suggest that you talk to your doctor, your healthcare provider, um, let them know what you're wanting to do, right? I also suggest you always do your own research. Right? With keeping that in mind, just know that this is just stuff that I've researched. Myth number one is keto is just like the Atkins diet. I have heard this one so much. They're like, why bother with the keto diet? Just, just do Atkins. Okay, well, Atkins, is in, in keto are actually very different. Now, Atkins came from the ketogenic diet, like that's where it was basically founded from, but the Atkins diet and most low carb diets, their main focus is just lowering your carbs. That's it, right? Let, let's lower your carbs so that you can lose weight, okay? The ketogenic diet focuses a lot more on um, specific macronutrient ratio guidelines. These ratio guidelines are designed to achieve nutritional um, ketosis. So these would consist, these macros would consist approximately at about 75% of your fats, 20% of your proteins and 5% of your carbs. Okay, so it's, it's very macro um, oriented and keto is different for everybody. Like, um, and there's so many macro calculators out there that you can like Google online and they will help you get all set up, like depending on what you're doing, right? So like my, my macro seeing as how I'm getting ready to uh, start training for a half marathon is gonna be different than somebody else who, you know, is working a busy job where they're behind a desk all the time. They don't get to exercise very much, right? So their diet is gonna be, their macros are gonna be different compared to mine. Also weight can factors in that too. Like as I lose weight, I find that I'm having to change my macros, right? So. Um, and again, they have all sorts of calculators out there. They'll, you know, ask you certain specific questions like your age, your height, your weight. Contrary to popular belief, the keto diet is not all about meat and cheese, okay? Like I get lots of veggies in there, salads, broccoli. Um, I love, like when I'm craving just a snack, right? One of the things I love is just fresh, crisp cut um, cucumbers dipped in ranch. That's one of my favorite snacks. And um, I have one of these little devices that you can kind of cut your cucumbers and it kind of gives it a, rip a ripply effect. Just, I mean, I don't know. Sometimes when something looks pretty, it just seems more satisfying. Okay, myth number two, keto is not sustainable. Total myth. Keto is very much sustainable. And in fact, you will find that once you become uh, keto adapted, fat adapted, right? Your cravings are gonna disappear. Your hunger is gonna disappear. Um, it happens all the time. And when you listen to people talking about how they jumped off the keto diet, even myself, like I will freely admit that, uh, that you know, I have jumped up, I've jumped off keto after being fat adapted, right? And I can guarantee you none of those times was because I was sitting down on the couch and I was having a massive craving and I just said, forget it and just went out to eat, right? Like, um, yes, I've had my, uh, but yes, I've had my cravings that have come along, but they're not like those deep, deep cravings, right? Like, you know, I'll be sitting down, it's like, oh, you know, football's coming up, right? I want pizza. Now, but see, here's where, there's a difference between cravings and a psychological um, mind thing. And that's usually what have people going off keto, right? They get sad and depressed. Um, you know, something really bad in their lives happened. And if you're like me, you're, you're a sad eater, a depressed eater, right? Like um, I know one time that I went off keto, it was because I was just going through a really, really hard, dark period in my life. And I self-sabotaged myself. On, on purpose and I just started binge eating. It's like, I didn't care, right? Like I just started binge eating, eating. And, and that was something that got me off keto. 
Another time was, again, the football. It wasn't so much the pizza and that I was craving pizza. It's just I got into this mindset that, you know, you eat pizza during football, right? Like, it's just a tradition, you know? It's just something you do in, in my household when growing up, right? So it was like suddenly I needed this pizza, not because I was actually craving, not because my body was craving it, but because in my mind I felt like I needed to have it, right? Um, these are the, you know, I... I jumped off keto once because my weight had started like I was losing steadily for a while and then suddenly it just started slowing down and slowing down and slowing down and I got super depressed and I told myself you know what I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna go out to eat just for today just to you know lift up my spirits a little and then I'll get back on keto and everything will be fine and that didn't happen um that cheat led into another one which led into another one to let you into another one okay so when you hear people talking about going on keto and then it being hard and then going off keto, I want you to understand it's not because their body was actually craving these things. It's a psychological thing. It's it's a head game, right? And that can be a little bit more difficult, but that has nothing to do with keto itself. That has to do with the individual person, right? Um, me needing to have pizza to watch football had nothing to do with the ketogenic diet. That was me and my personal thing and my personal issue that I unfortunately didn't overcome right but I learned from that and now that football season's coming again I know what to do right like it happened it it stinks but I'm not gonna beat myself up about it I know what to do now so that doesn't happen again this season okay um myth number three keto is confusing and hard to start this one can kind of be a tough one because there's a lot of people out there that talk about keto and I can guarantee you none of us really talk about it in the same way. And we learn things over time too. Like, you know, I have watched several YouTubers uh, from the, the beginning of when they started keto to now. And the things that they talk about now involving keto have nothing to do with what they used to talk about back in the beginning. And this is just because they've learned a lot of things that they want to help people with. But you need to understand the fundamental basics of keto are super simple. 75% protein, or sorry, 75% fat, 20% protein, 5% carbs. That's it, okay? Keep your carbs under 20 and just start there. Super simple. Now, as you get more into keto, right, like eventually you'll get to a point where you won't need to count your macros as much because you'll have been doing keto so long that you know that if you go have your usual, um, you know, burger with lettuce, your go-to uh, sauce and specific condiments, you're already gonna know the macros are for that, right? Like you're not gonna always have to plug in your macros. Um, you'll, you'll eventually start learning these things. And then you might decide as you go along that you want to change things up a bit. Maybe you wanna do a little bit cleaner keto, right? Like you wanna start, you know, adding more veggies, specific veggies, you know, things like that, just to kind of, you know, shape it a little bit differently, you know, and that can be things that you can do later on. But when you're first starting keto, keep it simple, like stick to your macros, get on your calculator, find the calculator on Google, Google your macros and just stick with that. And don't worry about anything else. And people all over the internet will be telling you, oh, well, you can't eat that ingredient. It's bad for you. You can't eat that ingredient. That's bad for you. And then people just get this information in, computed into their brains and they go into overload. And they, said, for, they say, forget it. I'm, I'm not doing keto no more. It's too confusing. It's really not. Just stick to the basics. And then as you go along, as you get in better, as you get improved, then you can change a few things here and there, right? And you don't have to change everything all at once or you don't have to change anything at all. I don't really, I, you know, I still use my artificial sweeteners. Um, I'll still um, go to Walmart and I will get myself some like keto cookies or some Quest chips or, you know, things like that. You know, as long as they fit into my macros, I'm okay with it. So it's all up to how you want to do it. And that's the great thing about keto. It's not so much confusing as it's adaptable to you and your personal lifestyle. And that's what makes it so amazing, right? Like keto doesn't restrict you. Like it's not like you have your back up against a wall and you can't move, right? Like 
Keto is like a stretchy, comfy pair of leggings, right? The kind that you can put on and they're soft and they're com comfy. And like, no matter how you bend or move or, you know, uh, bend your leg or whatever, it's just gonna move and conform with you, right? That's what the ketogenic diet is supposed to be. It's supposed to conform with you, your lifestyle, move and flow with you how you wanna do it, right? And all the other background noise, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Stick with the basics and do what is great for you. All right, so here's a, here's a good one, okay? Number four, glucose is the preferred fuel for your brain. So first off, we need to talk about a very key component, component to the brain. There is like a wall in your brain. And it's called the blood barrier. Now this blood barrier is like a very tight uh, barrier that allows only certain types of components that are in your blood to actually penetrate it and uh, reach the brain, right? Very important key components, okay? For th that's what this blood barrier for your brain is. Now, glucose is actually one of these components that have a really hard time breaking or getting through that blood barrier. Now, this means that you get, you get very inconsistent um, energy levels to your brain. And this all depends on how much glucose is available, okay, at any particular point in time. This is how we end up with like a 3 p.m. brain fog, or, um, you know, you'll have lunch and then you just kind of crash, right? These are the inconsistencies in the energies due to the blood barrier. Now ketones, however, they're different. They are so tiny, so small, that they're able to easily cross that blood barrier. Um, they can facilitate a constant supply of energy to your brain. And in fact, it has been shown that the brain can get up to 75% of its energy from ketones. And this is why so many people that have like autism, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, epilepsy. That's why the ketogenic diet works so well for these people. And not just for them, but for for anybody, right? We have so much more energy. We're, we're not having our 3 p.m. Uh, brain fogs. We're not having um, our crashes. And, you know, we've got this energy helping to supply for us. Uh, ketosis also balances out uh, two really important neurotransmitters, okay? So you have a, a neurotransmitter, which is GABA, which is basically the calming neurotransmitter, right? That's, that's your calming one, okay? And then you have another one, glutamate, okay? And that's your excited uh, neurotransmitter, you know, your woo excited sort of um, transmitter. The ketosis has shown and has been proven to take both of these neurotransmitters and balance them out perfectly, a, a, a great balance of yin and yang. Now, um, because of that, because they're so well balanced, we can modulate our stress levels better. We can maintain a better focus, right? So ketosis basically helps us focus better. It helps us um, with stress relief. So if, you, if you're living a very stressful uh, type of lifestyle, I could see ketosis being a huge help by balancing these neurotransmitters to help you balance that stress that you have in your life, right? Um, I've definitely seen it. I have high anxiety. Um, I had a very hard childhood and I suffer from really bad anxieties and I have noticed that when I am in ketosis when I am fat adapted my stress levels and my anxiety levels are so much lower we're talking about 75 80 percent lower than what they normally are um I feel so much better right I have I have a clearer mind and I feel more balanced in my life so the last one we're gonna talk about today, number five, you can never eat carbs on keto. Definitely a myth. <laughs> Definitely a myth, okay? Um, <laughs> so yes, part of the point of keto is to limit your carbs, to, to limit your carb count 
so that you can cut off your, your glucose stores and train your body to use ketones for fuel. Um, basically, it forces your body into ketosis. However, that doesn't mean you're removing carbs completely. We have a thing in the keto diet that's called net carbs. And so we, what, we, what we do, we do net carbs because they, they help us not eliminate foods that, that are higher in fiber. They help us make sure that we're filling up on vital nutrients, but that we're still keeping our net carb count low, if that makes sense. So, and basically what net carbs is, is you take your total carbs and you minus your fiber and that's what your total amount is. So for example, take an avocado, okay? Now an avocado is 17 grams of carbs. However, an avocado is also 13 grams of fiber. So you don't count the seven, when you're doing your macros, right? You don't go, oh my gosh, 17 grams of, of carbs and I can only consume 20, I'm gonna eat this avocado and that's I'm gonna, all I'm gonna to get to have all day. No, because you have to minus that fiber. So really that avocado is only costing you four grams of carbohydrates, right? Because you gotta minus that fiber. So, and again, this just helps balance so that we're getting plenty of fiber in our diet and we're, st and we're still keeping our carb count low. These were my five myths for this video i will have another video coming out for you guys at some point that will contain the next five um and there's plenty of myths out there i was just planning to do these two parts but if you guys are enjoying this and you would like me to find even more myths to talk about let me know down in the comments below or if you have a particular myth that you're curious about or something like that also put that down in the comments and i can add that to my list i hope everybody is having an amazing week I'm, you know, summer's almost over. I hope that you guys are getting those last fun times in there before school starts, things like that. I know we're gonna have a busy time. I homeschool my kids. I've got a little boy who's going into the first grade this year. So, so much is going on. You know, there's a huge leap from kindergarten to first grade. And so, um, I'm nervous yet excited about it. You know, I've already, my daughter's already graduated. I homeschool, I homeschooled her preschool all the way through graduation. So, um, which is exciting when you think about it. But anyways, um, so I know what to do. I'm just, you know, I'm excited to get started right now. I know eventually I'm going to poop out, but um, that's pretty much what I've been doing is when I'm not training or making videos for you guys, I'm just getting everything ready for homeschool <laughs> gotta get schedule down so i will see you guys in my next video bye